Hey, welcome to the show. Feeling good with Duddy. That's me. Let's go. Let's go. Whoa, we are back. That's right. Episode 93 of Feeling Good with Duddy, the show that points at the world, has a laugh, and then points in the mirror and has a laugh. Fairest of the fair, bravest of them all, that's us. We've got an amazing show today, but I'll let this guy tell you about it. I'm Jake B., a barber here in Southern California. Let me tell you about my brother, the host of this show, guitar player, singer of the Dirty Heads. Here he is. You love him. Duddy B. We're back. We're back. In a while. Yeah. What, three weeks, was it? Three weeks. Wow. Yes. Well, it feels good to be back. And did you say 93? Episode 93, man. Creeping on 100. 93, creeping up to 100. Uh, haven't figured out what we're going to do for 100, but got to do something special. This is every day when we come into the bunker. Luke goes, hey, you guys, episode 100 uh, is going to be like Inica. We should really talk about that. And we go, yeah, we absolutely should talk about that. And then we go later. And then we absolutely don't talk about it. Probably episode 98, we'll start feeling Ooh. the heat. <laughs> Let's be honest. Episode hundred. It's gonna be just it's like episode be just ninety-nine. Me and you isn't probably. It? We won't it even really, be able to find a guest. It'll be. It'll be that. Yeah. It's gonna. Yeah. Don't get excited. Is what we're saying. No. But Duddy, what but do we this have show, today? This, this show's show. a great show. Not only do we have a uh, great friend of mine, uh, someone you know, we've actually written songs with for the Dirty Heads. We've toured with um, not only with his band he plays with Iration, uh, but you know he's come out with the Roman Duddy tour and done his solo acoustic as well. Um, we've got a conspiracy query. The stoner idiots, I believe, are stopping in to uh, interview yes. Micah for a quick second. Um, I'm not going to tell you what it means, but we got some PP baseball. Oh, yeah, that's right. PP baseball. Yep. That's a new and, thing that's uh, happening today. Jake's actually going to tell us a little pee his pants story as well. That's and right. And then we've got a bunch of uh, fun Q&A questions that uh, came from our Patreon members. And speaking of our Patreon members, Jake's going to tell you real quick how you can support the show. That's right. Two ways you can support the show, guys. Share the show. Tell a friend about the show. Give us reviews on like Apple Podcasts. That's the main spot. Give us the review. Five stars. Write something about us. Whatever you want. That helps. If you want to support the show and get extra episodes, you go to Patreon. It's $5 a month. Patreon.com slash feeling good with Duddy, $5 a month. You get four extra episodes. You're going to get tutorial, guitar tutorials from Duddy, and you get to ask us questions on the show. That's it. Other than that, you just listen and have fun. And uh, thank you for being here. Duddy, why don't you just tell them who the guest is? Let's get into it. Let's fire off All the right. show. So we've got a good friend of mine, Micah Brown. Um, not only is he in the band Iration, um, he's also written in the studio with the Dirty Heads. Uh, he did, I, I think, four songs at least with us on Cabin by the Sea album. He's come out and toured with the Roman Duddy Project. Let's bring him on, Micah Brown. What up? Bam. What's up, Bush and What's Brothers? Up? What is happening? And, and I've toured with you as well. Yeah. Sur HB Surround Sound did a tour, I think, probably 2013 or something with Spot Iration. On. Yeah. So, yeah. And you've been around forever, acoustically first and now with Iration. Yeah, I, uh, you know, thanks for making me feel old, but no. yeah, <laughs> well, join us. With, it's we're crazy. Older yeah. than you. We it's crazy how, yeah, like a decade can just fly by, you know? And mm -hmm. I mean, you guys have been doing music for longer than that. So, I mean, it just, you know, you, you put your head down and you wake up a few years later and you got this career behind you and still more ahead, hopefully. So <laughs> yeah, a lot more ahead. it's wild. The longevity of careers in, in like this particular, particular scene, like the reggae rock scene and stuff like that is, is awesome. Cause I don't know. I feel like, I don't know if you're in like a punk band, it, there's, it's really hard to keep playing punk when you're older. There's like bad religion, a couple people, but in, like with reggae rock and stuff, I feel like Dude, in reggae, you don't care if the singer's 80, right? Yeah. You're like, yeah, I'm here to see Yellow Man or whoever. I don't care if they're 95 years old. So I feel like you guys can play forever. It's just, that's the style of music. You're it's in. very you're true. You're not going anywhere, um, It guys. ages well, for sure. It totally <clears throat> it does. It does. Um, and most you, of it, at least. Most yeah. of it, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, honestly, it wasn't always like that. Uh, you yeah. know, I remember right when the Dirty Heads first started touring, and we would get outside of anywhere that was near a coast, and... 
yeah. people were just like, what the fuck is this? It's you know? still a niche style, but it's just a huge ass it's niche. Grown. Over the last decade, I mean, it's quadrupled, probably more than that, really. It's yeah. just an actual huge scene in itself, but it's not going anywhere. It's only growing. And like I said, nobody cares how old you are, or how young you are in the scene. It's just, let's do it. Yep. That's a unique thing. You know, yeah. you can be a Willie Nelson in this scene. Yeah, or like you just know, rip forever. Toots, rest his soul. You know, he did it till he basically died, and yeah. he was in his late seventies, I believe. We we played with him uh, last year, I think, or the year before um, our mm -hmm. last summer tour, whenever that was. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, they, he came out and we did the Red Rocks show with Toots, and oh, just watching him like kill it at seventy-seven years old, and the place is going off. It's like, mm -hmm. man, that's awesome. Yeah. It's wild, man, and I, that's one thing I always. Uh, Notice, like with Yellow Man too, like he he would get older, and he you know he's, he looked like he's sick and he was old, but he'd be up there running around that stage yeah. mm -hmm. like a madman, doing like push ups the whole time, and just yeah, he's, even he's when he's his like voice not was all fucked up. Body fat no, yeah. Yeah. like dude, these guys are out here still just killing it. And yeah, Luke told mm. me about this earlier. Actually, Bunny Whaler, I guess, died today, yeah. seventy three. What yeah. Bunny today? Today, wow. yeah, it's a bummer. Today's Tuesday. Yeah, this show will be out Wednesday. So yesterday, yeah. if you're listening, yeah, yeah, we're getting to that that space where like the legends are, you know, they're not all gonna live forever. So it's yeah, like, it's a bummer, but yep, but crazy. So um, man, yeah, like you were saying, your last summer tour, whenever was that? Um, <laughs> 2019, I guess. Yeah, jeez, craziness. Well, weird story. The the last tour that you did, I'm assuming you were actually on tour with duddy and with the rome rome and duddy i guess you guys weren't really rome and duddy yet you were just on tour with duddy and rome doing yeah, that yeah i think and yeah you had just when kind COVID of hit. branded it rome and duddy maybe mm -hmm. but it was like the first thing you were doing right because you put out uh that first single the, the cover. stone yeah me. yeah i think it was honestly what's today march 2nd it was a year ago today that i joined up with you guys because our iration tour ended march 1st and i flew into billings Get march 2nd here. wow one year from today you we joined planned all this by the way wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> so and you were able to play a few shows you guys had a nice little minute we on the road a half dozen shows together yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it yeah. Was, i felt like like we were just getting to like a really cool spot like where uh, the shows were about like they were coming into form like doing like me coming out with them and mm -hmm. you know it was like we were hitting our stride and then it's like head on home boys yeah it was it was it was weird because it was all happening around us but you know we've talked about it a little bit before on here yeah. but you know when you're on the road sometimes in your bus and the van, all you're really seeing a lot of the times is like the bus the back of the venue maybe a hotel room yeah and you get in your little bubble and you kind of lose a little bit of touch of reality of what's happening in the real world so we were hearing about the coronavirus and stuff but it wasn't like real and then all of a sudden it got really real real yeah. quick <laughs> and i mean if you think about it it was honestly here before we all knew about it right it mm -hmm. had to have been here for a while and like i had been living on a bus with 13 mangy dudes for like, oh. you know uh six weeks and I'd, we i mean 13 know. on the bus well no it was two buses but i mean like you're but still, still like, you're in close quarters with those close guys quarters. for all day like when you're sound checking and stuff but so yeah i mean it's a wonder i guess maybe maybe i got it and it came and went a long time ago who knows <laughs> who knows <laughs> <laughs> yeah but so you guys did some driving shows we did some driving shows you actually put out some new music we had an album yeah we, we it was a big debate of like do we put out this album that we're really proud of and that we can't tour on now we had the 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 coast and summer tour the west coast and the east coast and it was all oh. like laid out like you know and then <clears throat> you know we just had to pivot and we just decided to put out the music anyways because even like the song the content of the, the the lyrics like was so timely and it was so kind of serendipitous in that way like the music felt like it needed to come out anyways so we were just like let's put it out and then next year we'll still be able to tour on it and by then people will kind of have a little bit more like time with the music to mm -hmm. you know because you go out on a tour right after like drop a, an album and then you go on tour it's like the new songs don't hit as hard you know nope. totally people are there to hear their favorites and yeah. It, yeah it's hard to have a favorite in in like a couple of weeks yeah. you need time with an album totally it's funny the, and usually with an album the, the songs you love right away go to, you know you start liking some yeah. deep cuts better and then yeah, yeah i well, totally agree it's always weird with that and you and you you can't expect uh that everyone in the crowd's even heard the new album most yeah. of the time you know, they, haven't, yeah. they haven't maybe let's let's say you're super lucky and half of them have you're like mm -hmm. well you got half the people out there that are going what is this i've never heard this before yeah 
Well, because so, yeah. if you think about going to <laughs> concerts as a fan, like, mm -hmm. you know, my wife's a big Kings of Leon fan. And so like I go with her and I become a fan through her. But like, yeah, well, they'll put out a new album and we'll go to the show and we don't even know there's an album. It's like, and it's not because we're not paying attention. It's mm -hmm. just like, you know, everybody's at a different level of fandom. You yeah. Know? yeah. So you, even if you're selling a bunch of tickets, not everybody there is like a super fan that is all I plugged into your music. You know, you explaining that to me once. He, I, I was like, man, I was saying something how like, it seemed like everyone here like knew your band and you're like, somehow you were breaking it down to me. I'm, I'm looking at Duddy for all the listeners right now. <laughs> One time we were talking about the crowd and you were like, no, you have to understand like most, it's, a lot of these people don't even know who we are. And I'm like, no way. And you're like, yeah, like someone's girlfriend likes the band and just brought this dude or brought, you know, their friend that's never heard of the Dirty Heads. And I was saying something about the crowd, like yeah. how I could, you know, and you were saying, yeah, man, like a lot of these people may have never heard of us before. And it kind of blew my mind. I don't know. When I look at a huge crowd and yeah. I think that most of them are singing the words, I just just assume everyone knows the band and knows every song yeah well and especially when you're out there like playing the festivals and stuff you know you'll have these huge Big crowds time. and you're yeah. like yeah well maybe 10 to 15 percent of them out there are there to see us mm -hmm. yeah but it's cool because that's how you make new fans and you have exactly. to yeah, yeah you don't want to just play to the same people over and over again in your whole career you want to grow that audience and absolutely yeah so here's the deal with you when i first remember you and this is you were playing acoustically i think always by yourself i would see you i think i saw you at the galaxy theater before it's what is it called now observatory the observatory yeah. it was the galaxy i, I feel like i yeah. saw you there acoustically so what happened with the transition you were an acoustic guy and then mm -hmm. how'd you get into iration what was that so like? really i mean for me like having 17th street which is where i met you was yep. like really a big springboard for me as a young artist because i was an unknown I was doing residencies in Laguna Beach, like three, three hours a night playing covers in my own songs. And like, I always was of the mindset, I want to be a songwriter. I don't want to mm -hmm. just play covers and play other people's music. And mm -hmm. you do that at the beginning, obviously to learn songs, get your chops up, have like have enough to play a set, you know, things like that. But I met Onik, who Onik Dang, he's like Lewis's partner over at 17th. Um, 17th at a, Street Studio, 17th yeah, everyone Studio. What year is this about, just to set the table? This is probably 10 years ago, you're thinking, or more? Probably like 12 years 12 ago. Years ago. Is yeah, this when we were recording Cabin by the Sea? I think you guys were not recording it yet, but you had already done Any Port in a Storm there. Okay, and so in between those. Yeah, and so... So you're like hanging out at the studio with Louie and maybe sometimes some bands come through and you get to play on the projects. I was, projects like, I was and like stuff. the resident studio yeah. rat dude. Like nice. kind of what Rome was when he first started too. Yeah, like exactly. Rome was always there, lived there for a while. Like, and I always heard about Rome, like, you know, mm -hmm. just because he had just kind of moved on and like, but his presence was still his like, you know, his effect on the place was still there a little bit. And mm -hmm. and so I just felt like that was like my role now. Like, you know, that guy that's always hanging around that was like ready to go jump in a session if need be. And so I worked, me and Lou did two albums together of my own music. And I think we had done my first one by then. So we, I first came in, Onik was like, he, he, he discovered me at Blue Laguna in Laguna Beach playing a set. And uh, he's like, you should meet my homie Louie. He can record you, he's dope, yada, yada. Like fast forward a year or so, I, I put out an EP. Um, I'm, I have my own band kind of forming cause I had been using people in the studio and then like we'd play shows, you know, Lou started playing bass for me live. And, um, my buddy, Kevin officer was my drummer who I met through cat who, um, uh, was recording there at the time. And then he started playing with stick figure, you know, so it was just kind of this melting pot of people coming through and finding their way and like realizing what they want to do and doing it. And that was kind of what I did. And then, so once you guys came back in to start on cabin by the sea, Lou, I was kind of Lou's right hand man for like certain things, you know? And so <clears throat> little spots that I could fill in the void of, of that, like harmonies and things like that. Guitarists, like just ideas, like something would pop and I was kind of shout it out. And if someone liked it, they'd try it, which was fun. And it was like this cool kind of uh, encouraging environment of like any, anything goes as long as it's cool. Like we'll, mm -hmm. we'll try it out, you know? No, a hundred percent. And I mean, that's how the dirty heads have always been. Um, you know, me and Jared a lot with writing. It's like, if someone in the room has a great idea and it's not one of us there's no ego yeah. it's like oh that's dope let's use that you know yeah. for sure so yeah i remember cabin by the sea actually <laughs> uh the song was almost done i think um and i remember i think cheese was saying that he felt like it could have like a post course or something it was like before I there totally was a post course that. and so i was in there and then i think we were just kind of all you know like round tabling ideas and like 
I think, um, you know, that half of that post course was like something that like, I kind of just threw out there and just, and then it's, so it's cool that, you know, you guys were open to just trying it. And if it worked, it was like, yeah, like you said, no ego, like this is dope. No Let's ego. move on. Let's get it and put it in there. And well, there was lots of cool ones. You also came up with the, the super, uh, I always loved that vibey, like there's a little guitar solo in Burned By Myself. Oh, the bridge, yeah. The bridge. Yeah, it's kind of like a musical boo, finger boo, picky. Boo, 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 boo. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that was one of those. You threw that out. I think you had the acoustic guitar in your hand and we were all sitting in the room messing with that bridge part and you like started playing that. We were like, yep, get in yeah, the Yeah, it was just kind of a, a finger picky vibe and yep. so I threw that down acoustically and then I, as I was thinking, I was like, it'd be cool to throw an electric lead on top of that too and just yep. make it this kind of folky kind of piece which is yeah it fit the song super fun and yeah. um also a lot of backups in day by day, day lots by of cool day. harmonies and backups in there yeah. so yeah so studio guy really that yep. was that it's was like kind of my studio musician that was kind my, of at 17th right now that was my start yeah yeah and so and then it's funny though even like being able to play kind of some shows with you guys outside of the studio, you yep. know, like doing, I think we did Weenie Roast, Smoke Out. That's we did some right. pretty dope yep. festivals where I got to come out as like a guest, you know? Yeah. And so that was my first taste of like big crowds and that kind of shit too. Yes, that's right, man. That's I almost insane. forgot about that. Yeah. I remember wow. we did, we did Weenie Roast at uh, Irvine Meadows, yep. Rising Wireless. And I got a haircut from this chick in like the artist lounge thing. Like <laughs> A-Rock had a pretty sick like artist suite that year, like the gifting lounge kind yep, of thing. They I had like that. barbers and shit. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I was there that year. That was the first time you ever played, right? That was for Lamey. Would it, would it have been the first time you played Weenie Roast? That was the first time we played Weenie Roast. Yes, dude. Yes. Like I met Dr. Drew there. I got a yep. picture with him. Oh, and yeah, and the that. fucking Stone Temple Pilots played. Remember mm -hmm. Scott Weiland? I remember watching him kind of stagger out yeah. of their backstage oh, thing man, and he passed away not long after yeah. Yeah, that was a crazy year it, it was, was. Uh, i remember this now yeah. yeah i think that was yeah i think you I just jogged a memory that. free totally. yeah my parents were there for sure who Our was the, the headliner it was a big act it was that a, was a great like it oh was a God, fun I show it. Oh, oh it's killing me no it no, wasn't i don't think it was Coldplay. devo cold play yeah. it was and their show was fucking sick. it was but i remember they were getting interviewed by was it Cat from K Rock was doing the interviews there, or who or was Nicole, that? Nicole, maybe. Gosh, maybe I, don't I don't think it was actually. Yeah, maybe both. I don't know. I don't know, but they were doing the they were interviewing the bands, and I remember Coldplay was up there getting interviewed, and it was right behind our dressing room like trailer area where they were doing the interviews, and they were live, and we were just we were smoking a lot of weed mm -hmm. and it was just blowing all onto them and they no. kept making comments and they were just like Jeez, oh, the dirty what? heads are back yeah, there getting yeah. fired up <laughs> well and you guys had covered viva la vida or yeah. whatever was that before that i kind of i think I it was all at the same time it was probably sort just of. all around the same time but i, I think was it was cool one of those money. things where we probably played a little earlier in the day so we were done you know so we were already I remember, kinda, yeah i can't I, I was kind of homies with Beer Mug at the time too, because through the OC Music Awards and things like that, K-Rock covered. And so um, I was kind of running around, I think I watched Coldplay with Beer Mug and Nicole. Yeah. And I remember going back through the, like the entrance to backstage and we're like showing our badge and everything we walk. And then like Nicole sees like four or $500 on the ground. Like someone probably pulled out their badge and like oh their wand fell out. And so we literally spent a minute. We were everybody we could find in the area. We were like, did you lose some money? You know? And then I, we looked at each other. I was like, what do we do? And so she's like, well, split it, split it and then pay it forward. You know? And so we both Damn. like made a pledge to each other. Like we're going to pay this forward. Like help somebody bless somebody else. We have to go rent. buy um, everyone drinks at yeah. the whole festival <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah. That is a rough one. Hey, you ask as many people yeah. in the two, four or $500. Yeah. We didn't Yikes. mind just, you that's know. a fine yeah nicole yeah she's a good is. person she's dope yeah hell yeah no, that. that's crazy that that is like a time that i kind of forgot but you just jogged that totally free yeah. i remember standing back there with those k-rock people because this was all new for us yeah dirty heads finally had the banger of a song and obviously you're new and you're on stage with them and we're standing next to all the people that we'd listened to in yeah. radio since we'd grown up yeah i think it was like what the fuck is going <laughs> on man it was a crazy time stage like you you finish yep. your last song and like Angels and Airwaves is spinning on out. Tom DeLonge's like about to rip a guitar. I'm just like, yeah. oh, I've, I've been listening to Blink since I was like 12 years old. That's awesome. And I remember too, that might, that may have been the first time I, that was probably definitely the first time I performed on a spinning stage. Oh yeah. And, I, and Irvine Meadows was where we grew up seeing all of the biggest shows and the mm -hmm. biggest bands, you know? So yeah. I remember we that saw one MC turning Hammer for there, that first famously. time. 
I mean, it doesn't get bigger than MC Hammer. No, it really doesn't. We saw him. MC uh, Hammer, Jodeci, Boys to Men, and TLC. (laughs) All on one night, and we were there. Let's not brag. (laughs) Let's stop bragging, but we were like... 10 and an eight year old little white kids just loving life yeah. in, in a sea of hot sisters. But that stage was turning though, I'll never forget that feeling. That was like that first, like, holy crap. Yeah. Yeah. Look at where we're at. That what was a cool hell? year too. Cause there was a lot of, it was like, um, offspring and like Pennywise mm-hmm. and a bunch of dope punk Dude, bands that I loved. Deftones. Anyways. Yeah. With, uh, that was cool. I feel like court, like whole played that Courtney love. I've went, I've gone to two weenie roasts, I think with, with the dirty head. So that could have been the other one. Was I she always, like the special guest? They always have like a yeah, special yeah. unannounced guest. One of the special guests. And I don't know if it was this night was Dave Grohl and he was by himself with an acoustic. Was that a dirty heads weenie roast or not? I don't remember. I don't okay, remember Okay, well, then the other weenie roast I went to was not a Dirty Head weenie roast. Okay. Yep. Anyway, I'm oh going to get them all God. mixed okay, up now. But, so, <laughs> oh, do you have another memory from the weenie roast? This is probably weenie roast 2010 or 11. Which one do you think? One of You one got of it right those. here? What, what year is, is it? 2010, K-Rock yeah, weenie roast. STT. Yeah, read off that list, Micah. We got 2010. Sublime with Rome and Stone Temple Pilots cover, uh, headliners. We got Deftones, Hole. There, so the, Hole yeah, yeah, there it is, Hole. Devo, Paramore, Silver Sun Pickups. I dope. really liked them that night. I think night. Silver Sun pick, played they the killed. same year the next time when I played, yep. too. Um, Spoon, which I love them. Cage, Cage the Elephant. Those guys are Chevelle. awesome. Holy Tempered shit. Trap. Yeah, I'm, like, I haven't even thought of some of these bands since then. Chevelle. Dirty Heads. <laughs> Thanks, Luke. Passion Chevelle. Pit and Against Me. That's a that's a well rounded lineup. Yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, Against Me. So yeah, so that's twenty or uh, that's so 2010. That's eleven years ago. Yeah, yeah. So that's crazy. That is a lazy poster yeah. by today's <laughs> standards. I mean, Luke, c- grab that poster and put it on the on the YouTube video because that deserves just absolute tarnishment. That's like a we'd pass on that if they're like, yeah, we we're like, yeah, maybe we should just go with a different hey man, company. Eleven years ago it was a lot different. Yeah, that must have been just. Oh. A banger that's like shit did they figure out the lineup 30 seconds before they went to print <laughs> oh no either but, way banger we'll move on from the yeah. uh, Rose 2010 but i do want to tell one quick story from it i'll never forget because that was right like you said right when we were just starting to like kind of build some steam yeah that was our biggest show probably to date for sure and mm-hmm. we're backstage at the you know irvine meadows there's all these huge bands like you just heard that are there that at that age and at that point in our career, we're just like, holy crap, I can't believe we're here. And Lay Me Down is is like the number one single yeah. at this time. It Lay was the song like of the one. summer. It's yeah. totally number one. So, so you guys are the young like guys popping off. And uh, we're in our trailer and, you know, management comes and Brayden, you guys both know Brayden. Oh, yeah. I'll say his name, whatever. We love Brayden, but we, we always made fun of him for this anyway. He came and he was backstage and, and he worked with management and he came in our trailer and he was all fired up at the end of the night drunk probably a little something else as well <laughs> and he was just all wired and fired up and <laughs> we don't know why today why to this day i don't know why he did it but we're coming out of the trailer and he jumps out of the trailer into we had like a rubber trash can outside of our trailer and it was filled with trash <laughs> disgusting trash from all day and night long and he jumps into it and it like breaks <laughs> He falls, eats absolute <laughs> shit. Like the trash can, it, it like he breaks. Absolute shit. He, he's just laying there now in a <laughs> pile of like half drank beer, spilt trash, uh, and bananas, food, and, shit. and like you know catering that's been thrown. That half just pizza slices. One of those oh. things. I mean, the guy. And I'm talking. The guy was thirty something at the time. You know, oh, like not like a great. little kid. And it was just like one of those moments where you're like what the fuck are you doing dude like, now you're backstage at the weenie everybody's roast. looking at oh. us because it was like the loudest thing in the world it's just <laughs> trash everywhere someone from our management's rolling around in it you know we're just like <laughs> praying uh, the like fuck? imagine the worst case scenario and then it's worse than that yeah, <laughs> yeah. he thought he's like i he was so fired up he's all the guys are gonna love this Rock star, dude. Epic I'm gonna fail. jump into the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> what a terrible choice, dude. To be fair, you guys were insane 
it, you guys would like pee into the air and shit on each other back in the day. So he probably thought this is going to go over You're, swimmingly. It's a hundred percent right. And it's one of those <laughs> things too, where like I, you know, he was oh, married with kids at the time. So yeah. it was probably one of those, like he's out of the house. Yeah. yeah. Shit's like our songs. Number one. Yep. He's, he's just like, he's just I'm in party loose. mode. Oh. I think there might've been a couple, you know, a couple of those. Dude, maybe he might have the had the sniffles that and, evening. Uh, <laughs> I'm just picturing Brayden. That's why I'm laughing so hard. He's the exact guy that would do yeah, that and yeah. fall, and you'd and be like, like, "Why what on did earth?" You do that for oh, classic <laughs> shit. Uh, oh, man. the weenie roast, and then and then um, Luke pulled up a second one here. K Rock weenie roast. Ifia. So what year was this? this 2012. One, yeah, this is the one that I was at. Okay, this is the one you were at, Mike. Yeah, Coldplay, Incubus, Offspring, Silver Sun. Pennywise, Angels and Airwaves, Dirty Heads, Garbage, AWOL Nation, Group Love, Monsters and Men, Walk the Moon. Wow. Look at that. 2012, Monsters and Men. So that's like right when the whole thing started with the claps and the, and the acoustics. And yeah, the, totally. You know, go to family. Hey, everyone was just, hey. Yeah. Like seven different bands you had can, the hey. Even and the, the two years difference, you can see kind of like what's hot like between these lineups. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, because yeah. if we fast forwarded to 2015, it would be all Monsters of Men and, yeah. and Mumford and Sons, and it was probably called The Campfire. It was cool, though, because, yeah, like I was saying, Pennywise, was I was a big fan of them as a kid, and I went to, like, this after-party thing at the hotel in the lobby, and I'm in the bathroom taking a leak, and this large man just comes up next to me and starts peeing in the stall next to me. <laughs> and then I just kind of glance over and up, and it's Fletcher from Pennywise. Oh, and, yeah, he's a large and guy. And he's holding a bottle of vodka, and he just hands it to me. And he's like, how you doing? How's your night going? And I'm like, holy shit. And I just take a sip of his vodka and give him the bottle back. And yeah. It was if insane. Fletcher hands you a yeah, bottle you of vodka not, while you're peeing, you yeah, take you, it and you drink it. That's the lesson you take from so, this. I have I have a peeing next to someone's story, and it also involves the dirty heads. This was when I think uh, this was when like surround HB surround sound was playing with the dirty heads, or just for you guys. You had like the the record labels all wanted to sign you guys. This is 2010, and so you had several LA shows to play, and and this was the Viper Room. We, you guys played the Viper Room and yep. Surround Sound was the <clears throat> band for you guys. I remember that. And um, I'm peeing and in the bathroom and Keanu Reeves oh, pulls yeah. up and pees <laughs> next to me in the stall because his band, I think it was called Dog Star, That's like right. opened up Please or something. Please tell me he handed you a bottle of vodka. No, he didn't look <laughs> oh, at me. I didn't. Yeah. It was just Keanu Reeves, dude. And he walked up right next to me and is peeing. So that, that's awesome. You peed next to Fletcher. Did you take a little glance down? I didn't, dude. <laughs> oh, you keep it forward, bro. But I, you know, of course he wanted to. I don't know. This was pre-John Wick, but there he is, dude. Keanu Reeves, Dog Star, Fletcher. <laughs> and then when on that Iration tour, was that the tour Pennywise was on that we were on with you guys? Um, no, it was uh, um, Descendants. Descendants. And Sublime, yeah. And Sublime, okay, yeah. cool. I got to I tour actually, with Pennywise on one of the tours that I did. Speaking of other men's <laughs> body parts out, <laughs> <laughs> Red, Red Rocks with the Descendants mm -hmm. and you guys, um, Milo was using our green room shower and like, cause I don't know, like, I think there's not enough showers in every green room or something. So I just walk into my green room bathroom and Milo's just naked in front of the mirror, like drying off. I'm like, Oh, hey. oh no, sorry. <laughs> sorry. sorry. That was a crazy tour. It was like, it, cause it was our band. We were the opener. We were the smaller, smallest band for sure. But we had us and the Iration was on the tour. And then the, the descendants, which was amazing. They were on like eight shows. I think. Yeah. I think it was only a few handful. And of then shows. I think it was like one of the Marley, children yeah. you know was on like a few of them and stuff that was an awesome time yeah someone just walked into the studio hello into the bunker <laughs> um yeah but anyway yeah. good times reminiscing so backstage at red rocks you walked in on milo and, yeah. and you took a look i i mean you took a he peek. was facing away but so i just saw his back yeah, he I was a saw forced look yeah you, you, but i was like milo oh, from you the could descendants. not take a look you know it was right. funny when the descendants would play everyone would just gather around backstage and just sit quietly just it was just everyone out. would fan fanboy or girl out on yeah. that mm -hmm. legends all right y'all well as we're talking about famous people's uh pee and whatnot mm -hmm. <laughs> uh one of the first tours we did uh a good friend of ours uh this reminded me of because Brad walked in and it looks like it's uh, I'm, I'm going to be doing that golf tournament, by the way, Brad. And it's with Stan, uh, Stan Fraser, the drummer from Sugar Ray. He also helped, um, you know, 
with the writing and recording of our first couple albums, <clears throat> we did a quick little run with Sugar A. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the nights we were all partying, uh, Mark McGrath partying with us. You know, we're all we're all wild at this point. <clears throat> It was one of these shows where the backstage, there's only one bathroom in between the two dressing rooms. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and, and there was like one urinal and then there was one like stall and uh, Mark's in there peeing. We're joking. He like pees all over the place for a little bit, right? No big deal. This is where we're at in the night. It's late, right? Yeah. And then, so then <laughs> 20 minutes later, some people come in, you know, more people from the band and more people from the crew. And I'm not going to mention a name of who it is, but one of the people that comes in has met a lady of the evening out on the street. Oh. And, um, <clears throat> He, he's unaware of what has just happened in the bathroom. And, oh. and the next thing we know, we go in there and he's on the floor, no, no. on the floor <laughs> in the stall, just going to town, you know, and that's our joke with him forever. We're like, dude, we saw you having sex in Mark McGrath's piss puddle. <laughs> we saw that, dude. <laughs> we saw that. That's what you are now. Dude, Mark McGrath's piss puddle sounds like a heavy metal, like grunge band name. Totally. <laughs> a super totally. like ironic band. Yeah. It would have a real tight little we core actually had fan a lot base. Of fun on that little run. It was only like six or seven shows or something, and it, but we actually had a really good time. And Thank we got that dude. story from it. Memory late. I didn't know that one. Yeah. That's a nasty one. That's a fun I'm going to ask you oh, later man. who did that. But now, I mean, should we just get into it now though, Jake? It's time to get into it. Look, we've, we've gone down memory lane and it was a beautiful thing, Thank but you. now it's time to get serious. That was the warm up. All right. I'm ready. Showtime. Okay. This is your favorite part of the show. I will let Duddy explain to you guys what this is. <laughs> this is a conspiracy query, Micah. Okay. okay. It's not a conspiracy theory. No. It's a query. I didn't You're used come to up theories. With this. You're People used go, to theories. bro, this is this. This isn't that. Who's the conspiracy theory guy, Jake? He's the worst guy at the party. He corners you. He tells you that under the pyramids is pure plutonium or so or platranium and you're like what is that a <laughs> platranium. and then all the pyramids like equal up you know they're all pointing north so obviously you know he's the guy and then you're going uh-huh you're backing away slowly and oh, i gotta get another but he's still following you as you're backing and then you're opening he's that guy this isn't that guy he just goes dude Tell them what you, you kind of just this pose like a, a nice question. Yeah, I'm not and then, saying I believe in this. I'm not trying to convince you it's real. I'm just simply asking if you believe in conspiracy queries. Oh, uh -huh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right, let's see this it. one's fun. So you guys know we're taking you around the world. Yeah. We've been traveling all around the globe for Mike just letting Micah know that. And we've been finding the, our favorite conspiracy queer, queries or Really just monster stories. They're really, really just like ghostly monster into. stories, but we call them conspiracy queries. It's a loose segment. And this one is from our nation's capital, South Dakota. Oh, <laughs> And gosh. it's called Walking. Earth, our nation. It's called Walking Sam. And why is it creepy, Jake? I mean, that sounds pretty... Like a, I, it says a walking a, Sam. Well, wait till you hear horrifying. this one. Wait till you hear this one. A wave of suicides. 103 attempts as of December 2014 on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota is being attributed to the presence of the walking Sam figure. Teenagers claim a slender shadow like spirited dubbed walking Sam appears before them and commands them to kill themselves. Sound familiar? Sounds like you, Daddy. On some what? previous episodes of the anyway, keep reading. <laughs> Daddy's absolutely what told people to kill themselves on our I shows before. Yeah, he <laughs> took it back and he said he was sorry. But keep reading, the, walking the Daddy. The first wave occurred in 2013 when five members of the Agalala Sioux tribe. Okay, that'll get us canceled Sioux. for sure. Sioux, that's right. Sioux Agalala, right? Is that Agalala? Probably a glala, glala, but yeah, a glala, a glala, a glala, a glala, a glala, a glala Sioux tribe killed themselves and continued to spiral until a glala Sioux. I'm, I'm saying that wrong for sure. You're doing Sorry your best, if I am. Though, uh, and we the tribe's that. vice president, Tom Porbear, discovered photos on Facebook in 2015 depicting nooses hanging from trees, revealing plans behind a teenage group suicide. Oh, all right. That one. Whoa. That was a rough get through, but I probably could have read that. Hey, we, we kinda, let's paraphrase that. So 103 attempts. And it looks like from what they 
I can gather that how many of them actually succeeded there? There so, was a, it looked like there was a, there was a five like kids. Yikes. Yeah. In 2013, when five members mm -hmm. of the tribe killed themselves and uh, it continued to spiral, it continued to spiral because it says there was 103 attempts yeah. as of December, 2014, but only five of them actually did it. Yeah. And that was in 2013. So the numbers are, are fishy and, but it, it's absolutely <laughs> Look, so he's know, commanding them yeah. to kill themselves, but he's sounds not kinda like very slender man. Like, have you guys seen that documentary? Yes. Like, it, it, it sounds a lot like a similar slender man. type deal, which, you know, I, I, I tend to think that these things are rooted in some sort of truth, you know, like yeah. hundred and three attempts that, is like, a lot. Ones that are kind of consistent in different areas. Like, I feel like that shit happens. Like I had a friend, especially with like burial grounds and like native lands and sacred places like that with the native Americans. I know that my friend Jordan from Hawaii was talking about times he's been on sacred burial ground for like Hawaiian ancestry and like gets some really sketchy feelings or like mm -hmm. weird things happen with wildlife and shit like that. So yeah. I, I do think that there's some truth to that. I mean, I've yeah. had a, there, I have a friend that is not a liar at all. I would trust anything he said. And he's told me stories of that exact same thing. Like his, his girlfriend has family or his wife, I should say, has family that as Native American. So he stayed like a Native American land with them yeah. and he's seen things and he's like, and he's not a guy that I would ever think would ever make yeah. this up. So, hey man, you know, I've had more than a few people that I trust tell me that they've seen ghosts even. And so yeah. I'm starting to come around on this. Yeah. Like I am on this show. I've always been a, this is all BS, yeah. but I'm starting to open up in my old age to these types of things. And I, maybe it's the conspiracy query segment, daddy, and you bringing us all these things. It's just interesting and fun. And then my it mind's is. opened up and you know, you're telling me things. I've had friends tell me things. So I'm open to the walking Sam. And I'm glad that it's mainly attempts and not it's, a lot of follow-through here. It seems like you're here. both saying you believe in it. I absolutely believe in this I one. Believe. But let's get a little. Let's let's go a little bit more. Where does this come further? from? Yeah, okay. what is this? Uh, this what does that? This oh the no the spectre archetype Ar archetype. Uh, that uh, that walking Sam is based on has roots starting with the good old fashioned boogeyman and working all the way down to the slender man. Oh, there, there you go. go. Told me to do it uh, folklore of 2008. Yep. So the slender man told me to do it was the folklore of 2008. Did yeah. you guys try and watch that movie, by the way? No, I, I didn't with the, the actual movie. I did not the movie. I think there was like a doc. I saw that. It. I'm yeah. sure the doc was probably way better than the yeah, movie. Yeah, the doc was pretty uh, I'll Actually, I'll go watch the doc. I haven't seen that. But I tried to watch the movie. I couldn't. It was just yeah. really bad. Um, uh, the, the idea of shadow people is also a pretty old school urban legend going back further than history can care to track. However, the character of Walking Sam himself has uh, existed among the luck Lakota and Dakota Native American tribes for some time now with a record of him. Did I say that wrong? No. Uh, it like sounded the, like you were the chick Gianni Lakota. on the Food Network saying Rakota cheese. Rakota. Like, like, all right, Gianni, thanks for showing me half a mile of cleavage and your fucking crazy predator smile. You say Rakota however well, you'd funny like. because he said Lakota and then Dakota is only one letter off and he's Dakota. like, and Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> you got all defeated, but he's like, God damn it. Lakota and Dakota. Dustin, <laughs> Dustin reading these is part of the fucking joy of this song. For all. some reason, it's hard for me to fucking like read these off the screen. Try that again. Start with Lakota, Dad. Lakota. Lakota and Dakota. <laughs> Oh, okay, whatever. They get the, <laughs> you get the sometimes known as uh, the stovepipe hat, hat Bigfoot <laughs> or the Takuhi. The character's been spotted down by South Dakota or South Dakota <laughs> Sioux and Little Eagle tribes as far back as 1974. All right. Dude, I love that they call it the Top Hat Bigfoot. What are the, where's that? I, I Stove meant pipe Stovepipe Hat, hat Bigfoot. Bigfoot. What does that mean? So they're saying that the character probably is wearing a big ass hat, just like Slenderman. Oh, Slenderman yeah. has the tall hat and yeah. the suit. So yeah, man, that's all the same stuff, right? Well, it's You're like, I love how Bigfoot somehow finds his way into this conspiracy theory. Yeah, know? they had to slide one in <laughs> for the Bigfoot people, huh? That way they could tag the word Bigfoot and the yeah. Bigfoot spiders. Oh, yeah. Whoops, dude, who is this? the searches. Oh, wow. There it is. Luke's as fast as oh, he can course, pulling Luke up photos of oh, the- Oh, look at that. Oh, there- they're this, stylish. Okay, this isn't bad. On Etsy.com, we have a Squatchy Squatch Bigfoot stove 
pipe hat unisex t-shirt. All right, this is great pod. Yeah, that's good pod. You can go ahead and see the t-shirt. We'll leave a link below. All right, all right. Well, I guess I just uh <laughs> we believe you, right? You know, Micah, you guys I think I think, believe so. Yeah. yeah, if yeah. Yeah, so you're I'm not going to buy the merch, but I'll I I'll, I buy the story. Yeah. So you believe in that if you go into South Dakota, you might see a walking salmon who can try to convince you to kill yourself, <laughs> but he's not very convincing? We'll believe that. Okay. And it's and it's uh it's pronounced Dakota. Dakota. So, just for next time. All Have right. Have you ever been to South Dakota? You're going to want to go to South Dakota on the next flight. That might be the only state I haven't been to. <laughs> really? I'm trying to think about it. Like, I don't know if I've ever been there. but You probably have. Maybe. Uh, you've probably toured enough that you're like, oh, I have. But you're going to want to go there now okay. because who is going to enter the building at this very moment are two people that we warned you about. We told you about them. They're very stoned. If you thought Duddy and I were annoying, <laughs> these guys are like at least a little more annoying than us at the very least possibly more and they're going to come in they're going to interview and probably ask you a bunch of stoner questions are you prepared for them um i might need to get on their level but yeah let's do it <laughs> <laughs> okay well get on their level quick because they're coming in right now they are the stoners duddy and i are going to leave before they come in so here let's get out of here duddy quick and hold your nose and don't breathe on the way out <laughs> oh, are you ready bro oh, i'm ready dude fire it up bro yes. dude talk it talk it Sick. We're back, dude. It has been a hot minute, dude. Feels good to be back. You guys Sick. missed us, I'm sure. It's your favorite people. It's myself, Snake OG, straight out of S and D. You know who I am. And here's my partner. Who are you? Blonde Marley. That's right. <laughs> Blonde Marley, dude. Sick hat for the Duh. listeners. He's got like a, that's like a, I live in Canada and I'm chopping wood. And I ride a horse style hat. Is that a good description? What would you call the hat you're wearing? Like a, it's kind of like a, yeah, kind of like a duck. <laughs> it is like a, that is exactly. Hat. That's what that I should have said. In Russia, it's a perhaps. very much a Russian, sure, a Soviet duck hunter hat is what he's wearing. Anywho, we're happy to be I back. I got it. Where'd no, you get at it? At a gas station in Escondido. You did get it. Yeah. He's like, because my head was cold. Oh, uh, I got it just outside of Syria. He was going to go <laughs> with some sort sick. of Eastern block, but all right, just out at Escondido. We got someone pretty special on the show today, and it's been a while, so I know you've probably got some questions fired up. Why don't you just let everybody know who we're chatting with today? They already know, don't they? Uh, well, if they don't, we have Michael Brown here. There it is, dude. We're halfway through the show. Big fans, fans, Big fans what? senior band. Sus. What's up, Micah? Singing multiple times at Cali Roots. I'm instantly higher sitting next to you oh, guys, and I haven't sick. even smoked. That is what. That's what our. That's what my mom and dad say when we <laughs> hang out with them. <laughs> so, first off, first thing that came to my head when they're like, Micah Brown is coming to town. I was like, oh, sick, because I remember I was at Cali Roots watching you guys play, and I was like, who's that guy? And they're like, that's Michael Brown. And I was like, oh, shit. So I, I wanted to ask you this question then, but I get to ask it now. Has anyone ever called you Brown Micah? <laughs> um, no, I, I can't remember that ever happening. That oh, question took me by storm. Whoa, You're good, sick question. Sick. And good answer, but... Really good because oh. I was like, he's gonna hit him with a warm up hitter right to the jugular. Get him with another one. Oh, one of those set. questions, like the answer doesn't even matter. Because it really, like, the question is really the star of the show. <laughs> <laughs> kind of all about the oh, questions. Okay. Yeah, well, we that's like that, that sounded was... like one of those chef shows when they're like, you know, but it's a good meal and the broccoli is perfect. But the steak is the star of the show, <laughs> oh, and it's a little sad. over season, you know. Right, but anyway, hit him with it. Pepper him with another question. I'm in the cooking theme, sure. All right, sick. So speaking of Cali Roots, I was there. Oh, he's you warming were there. you up, dude. You were on stage. You, after I thought about if you, anyone had called you Brown Micah before, <laughs> I was First like, first thing that rattled in his head. Okay, so Brown Micah's on stage, and. Uh, I was like, okay, well, he's obviously in a reggae band. And he is white for the listeners. This, yeah, because 
That, that was, it was brown mica. We're like, who is this person of color? And then it was a nice white gentleman. But continue your story. When you filled out... Uh, I just want to say some hot button things. When you fill out applications and it makes you write your last name first, do you have to put brown mica? <laughs> I do. Oh, that's <laughs> that question, dude. <laughs> Knew it. <laughs> knew it. Yep. Good quest. I, I should have seen that one coming. <laughs> you really should have. <laughs> Nobody ever does. I That's the beauty coming. Oh, well, you'll never see this one coming either. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try my best to be a roadblock for this one as well and throw in bullshit. So go ahead. Pepper him with another one. <laughs> He's got one chambered, Micah. Wait, Brown. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, so you're on stage, Cali Roots, right? Sick. And Dude, I'm there. set the scene, <laughs> and bro. I'm like thinking about you filling out applications. <laughs> and I'm like, picture. oh, sick. Well, <laughs> uh, have you ever had to get a drug test? Yeah. Did you pass it or fail it? I passed. Did you Dude, pass congratulations. it? congratulations. Oh, sick. Okay, okay. Flying colors, by the way. Oh, Brian. Were you not doing drugs or did you have to take something to pass it? Uh, I just wasn't doing drugs, I think. I think oh. I was Because what Blonde would do, and it always worked mm. to your credit, mm -hmm. he would be like, oh, I've got this job interview coming. And he would go to like the Nutrisport and buy some bottle that was like purple and you would drink it and then you would get the job. Oh, that's how I've gotten every job. He would take bong rips on the way into the thing, and then he would pee with the purple drink. You it's remember? It's the purple drink. You drink it, but make sure you give yourself at least an hour before you go there because you will have ferocious diarrhea. <laughs> ferocious <laughs> diarrhea, but you would always get the job. So, you know, I guess the safest way, don't smoke any hay or... <laughs> Puff tough all the way up until the interview. Drink the purple drink from your local nutrition store. Yes. And I do warn you, I did have one about a half hour ago. Just don't yeah, <laughs> don't go to the job interview until you've dropped trow. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. You, you don't want to show right up for work and have to leave. Like I said, it is very ferocious. <laughs> it's a ferocious <laughs> diner. You know, Unfortunately, but the drinks are delicious, so I have one. Every day. He really starts his day with him. <laughs> All right, but for the serious question. That took a turn. Anyway, you got another hitter You're for on him? stage, Cali Roots, Brown Micah. Okay. You've traveled with a reggae band. Okay. Super sick. He's on a destination. I see and where he's going. I'm just wondering, was on your times of travels. It's get ready, Micah. Have you ever gotten free weed? Oh, he fucking <laughs> hit you with it, dude. Don't so, lie. So much free weed. Oh, <laughs> I knew it. And the way he said it, you because you know, most people would be like, yes, but he's like, so much. Almost like, I don't need all this weed. There's no room on the bus, is the amount of weed that I feel like you've been given. I have trash bags of old weed. Just Get out of here. What? Just wow. can't even smoke it all. When Do I, you know where Escondido is? <laughs> I'll, I'll bring it down. No way. Like down. Santa. He's just on the roof with a trash oh. bag of weed. And I'll go by Young live. Santa in some circles. <laughs> young Santa. <laughs> You do look like Young Santa. That's the greatest <laughs> nickname ever. If you were a rapper, that was... That's my, yeah. Y-U-N-G, though. You know, you got to mm. drop the O. It's no. young, young Santa. Young Santa. Yeah, and your flows are like gifts. <laughs> oh, totally. Oh, my God. He's just dropping gifts. I'm just oh, dropping sad. gifts as I fly oh, around in my sleigh. Oh, my God. I'm just another, slaying it. Another <laughs> gift is dropping in, in spring time. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Hell yeah. The new gift drop, right? Okay, you got it. But dude, I had a thought. Trash bag. Yeah. Filled with trash. If a trash bag is filled with weed, should we be calling that a trash bag, dude? Oh, That's disrespectful. So stash bag stash sack bag dude sick. sick. Thank you for immediately making that better. All right, any other questions? <laughs> Micah, dude, how do you like us? I fucking love you guys. You do? Oh, yeah. Sick, dude, because yeah. I'm feeling it vibe, and right. I think we're digging each other pretty good all here, right. all the three of us. Yes. All right, Brown Micah. <laughs> Have you ever had space weed? Space weed. Tell me more. What is that? Oh, I mean, the I intrigue. If I yeah. have to ask, I probably have <laughs> Yeah. Straight to the point. He didn't even tell you the answer. He just said, tell me more about this space weed. <laughs> we live in Escondido. Okay. Truth. Where Snake had my first burrito. All right. We live in the back house. We rent a, a back house. Bedroom. It's a, one, it's a studio 
It's a studio. We live with four dogs in the back house. It's a shed. In the front house, there is two gay, naked gentlemen who live there. We live with... And they are from outer space. They're galians. They are galians. <laughs> they and do they not, just never put clothes on. They don't. And they love us and we love them. And that's why this works out. Because everywhere else, a little history of our show. When we first started doing this, we lived in like Seal. But we had to move to Pacoima. We get kicked out of every place we go. We have four dogs. Yeah. Studio. We do nothing but smoke weed. And you've met us now, right? Yeah. You get it. I think the neighbors would complain. So we've lived with the Galeans now for what? Five months, yeah, six Galeans months. Love they us. are the only people that allow us to exist, but get to the space. weed. long story short, they smoke space weed out of square bongs. Whoa. That's what we were looking for in the reaction. Some people try to act like, Oh, no big deal. That's how so we do you have to make your mouth into like a square shape like, to like riff the bong. Dude, I've never really thought <laughs> about just, it smash my face <laughs> yeah <laughs> we just kind of dash our face <laughs> we put our mouth around the, uh, <laughs> the bong and just uh, we just breathe in kind of from a deep down mm. their right. mouths open very far they, so have they, big, they have like square mouths maybe or the in you it opens say that. in and then another mouth comes out which okay. is square <laughs> and attaches <laughs> yeah that's, that's to it <laughs> Yes, we haven't revealed that it's yet. It's actually their tongue, but it's like the tongue opens up and like they it's, inhale through their tongue. It's terrifying. To be <laughs> it honest. really is, but again, so, they're the only people so. that will have us, and we do love them. So, right. and they have space weed. So they have oh, space so. weed by the bundle. I don't know where they get it because they're here now, but we don't ask too many questions as long as they don't kick us off the property. <laughs> yeah. So I can see Daddy. He's flipping me off, and he's telling me. <laughs> Something as I think I'm wording it says, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, That's he's what doing, he's saying, I think. He's <laughs> doing the neck where like you put your hand in like a chop, a karate chop formation and you dash it across your neck. Kind of like a stop immediately the show now. It seems like that's what he's trying it's to say. It's time to stop now. Okay, so it's time for us to say, hey, dude, there's a song coming up. Is there not? There's a song. Micah Brown performed a song for you guys. He's going to perform. What song are we going to hear? We're going to hear a song called Home Tonight that I uh, wrote with Iration, the band that I'm in, and it's on our latest album, Coastin. And uh, it's one of the, it's the first song that I have like the full lead vocal because I'm not the front man in Iration. So mm -hmm. Micah Puchel sings most of our songs, but um, so it's kind of cool to take one and just like give him a break. I'll, t I'll sing this one, buddy. I got you. <laughs> Hell yeah. So, this is Home Tonight. That is sick. Well, we are honored. We will be immediately kicked off the property, but we'll do our best. We'll push our ears against the wall and try to hear from outside. Um, but it's been great to talk to you. This is Snake OG saying Puff Tough. And here's my partner's blonde saying, stay crispy. Later, Later boys. Later. All right, we're here with my good friend Micah Brown, and he'll be performing Home Tonight off Iration's new album, Coastin'. Enjoy. Now I used to waking up alone Darkness all around me Not used to picking up the phone When I wanna hear your voice Not used to being by myself With people all around me But I got used to being in my zone Learn how to block out the noise now that day we got circled on the calendar It's finally come around And I just can't wait till I get back to you I'll see you when I touch down Can't wait till I get home tonight It's been so long since I can hold you tight It's just you and I making up for lost time It's just you and I 
It's just you and I It's just you and I Making up for lost time In my mind, girl It's you and I, girl In our own little world On our own little planet Whatever you want, you can have it Gotta reach out and grab it Yeah, that's how it's gonna be When it's just you and me Close my eyes, that's all I see Can't wait till I get home tonight It's been so long since I can hold you tight It's just you and I Making up for lost time Long overdue Ready to go all the time It's just you and I Making up for lost time It's just you and I It's just you and I yeah. It's just you and I Making up for lost time It's just you and I It's just you it's just you and I making up for lost All right, that was awesome. Thank you, Micah. Yeah. Oh man, I gotta say, <laughs> you're still recovering yeah. from the stoners, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Deep breath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all are. We all are. You did they, great with them, actually. They're good guys. I mean, they're harmless. We know that now. We're like, dude, they're harmless. Duddy. I don't want to Do say like I'm coming around because last time I started saying I was coming around, he heard, and then yep. he was like trying to give me hugs, and I was like, eh. We don't want them to touch us <laughs> ever. Uh -uh. So, but yeah. they're fine. Oh man! But I gotta say, hearing live music again makes me feel good, Jake. Absolutely, it really does. And speaking of feeling good on this podcast, we have some sponsors that make us feel great. And first and foremost, Koi CBD. We love this. Uh, we love this company. We love this product. Uh, you've heard it before. I use it every single day in the morning. I get my little dropper. I take my twenty five hundred milligram, and I just bleep 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 go to town on it every morning. <laughs> I love the way it makes me feel. It really does. Um, uh, you've heard me say it before. I get these aches and cramps in my hands and in my fingers all the time. And especially when it's cold and in this bunker, it gets freezing. Micah found out the hard way. I'm wearing a dirty head sweatshirt right <laughs> I now. I <laughs> usually warn everybody that's coming to do the show. I'm like, hey, it's, it gets pretty cold in there for some reason. And I forgot to warn Micah and he came in a t-shirt and was like, uh, so I had to give him a dirty head sweater. Now I'm in all gray. <laughs> <laughs> How sad we have to warn our guests. I it know. is Arctic in here. So please bring winter clothing. It does get and cold. And we didn't tell poor Micah. But, but uh, when it gets cold, you know, I'm playing a lot of guitar and, and whatnot. And my, my wrist and my fingers, they get super sore and achy. And um, I've noticed, though, since I've been on a steady diet of CBD, that it really has gotten a lot better. But it still does sometimes bother me. And when it does, even after taking the droppers in the morning, if it bothers me later at night, they have these awesome rubs. And um, right now they've got this really cool new product. It's like a roll-on icy hot almost that's just mm -hmm. packed with CBD. That's what I'm using. Oh, my God. It smells great. It feels great. And uh, it's one of those things where, like, you put it on and you don't think about it. And 20 minutes later, you're like, oh, shit, yeah, my hands feel much better. And it's much healthier for you than like, you know, over the counter pain meds, Tylenols and things like that. So if you're someone out there, it's got aches and pains, give CBD a try, give Koi CBD a try. It is the best. And if you put in code feel good at checkout, you will get 15% off your first order over at KoiCBD.com. And uh, yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube or wherever you're listening, you can just click the link below and that will take you there as well. So yeah, Koi CBD, give it a try. And also- And they've supported 
supported us since like the absolute beginning. So we're so thankful for them. And we're going on like two years and they're hanging with us. And they don't forget about the furry friends either. They got like the dog stuff too, I'm pretty sure. Oh, absolutely. They do. I give it to my Actually, Duddy's always pop. Yeah, they have stuff for your animals. Yeah, let me tell you that. Yeah, so very cool. And also another awesome sponsor we have is uh, the Jack Rack from Plugins Keychains. This thing is super cool. Where is it? I have one right behind me, actually. Uh, It's just like a replica of a guitar amp head they have marshall ones they have fender ones and you just mount it to the you know wall in your house wherever you want and it comes with four keychains that resemble a uh quarter inch a quarter inch cable the head of a quarter inch is what you plug into your amp and you plug the other end into your guitar but you put your keys on it it's a keychain and when you get home you just plug in plug into the wall you know right where your keys are and when uh yeah you got to go somewhere you just unplug and you're on your way it's super cool i've had one on uh, the wall in my house for years actually before they were our sponsor and i honestly i can't tell you how many times someone's come over to my house and been like holy crap that's awesome where'd you get that and you know what i tell them jake what do you tell them? I say they can go to pluginskeychains.com, <laughs> and that God. is plural and with a Z. improv work there. Yeah, it's a P-L-U-G-I-N-Z keychains, plural, uh, dot com. Get yourself a jack rack. Put in code Duddy B at checkout, and you will get 20% off of every single order forever. You heard it here, people. Boom. Bam. Yeah. What a passionate sponsor, Reed. That That's was... what... Well, you really get, yeah, he doesn't phone products. it in. He's Come not on. reading like, you know, he's telling you. So um, we almost forgot oh, everyone's no. least favorite thing. Oh, am I going to, am I going to destroy it's, it? It's show me your riff time. Yeah. Luke looked at me and he pointed <laughs> at the guitar that we had over there that we were supposed to do three hours ago. You guys know anyone who can play, we go show us your riff and we hand them a guitar. They play their riff. Duddy and I have riffs. We'll see. Anyway, show us your riff. <laughs> Everybody's least, and I'll actually point this at the guitar this time, since last time I didn't. Riff upgrade, bro. Check it out, Duddy. Tasty. Oh, wow, right. yeah. Jake. I've been All practicing. Right, okay, okay. I was made fun of online. People were like, you need to do a better riff, bro. That's lazy. So I actually worked on that. Here you go. Oh, you, no, no pick. Okay, new riff. Duddy. That's, that's like a jingle. That's not even just a riff. <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's technically, that's, yeah, he went for the extra credit at the end. Okay, he thought so it was done, and he's like, you like I that? I was like, it needs to resolve. That was, I don't know. That it, was pretty. I, d- I dug it. Thank I you. Dug okay. it. <laughs> um, I don't, I, I'll just play what I kind of do when I pick up a guitar. And try with my eyes closed. I just do this. <laughs> That's in your face right there. <laughs> it's, it's cheating because I'm using a lot of open open notes. Dude, no, it's not no, it's... cheap. To be fair, Duddy said last week, we were talking about you, that you were coming on the show and you said something like, Micah Brown's the type of guitar player where he plays a riff and then hands you the guitar. Here, you play something and you're like, no, I'm good. Just fucking, <laughs> That's what Duddy said. And he proved that right there yes. today. All right, that was the best ever segment of that, unless you like people completely fucking up their Oh, dude, like, you, guys, Rome, you guys killed it. Thank you. Rome, last week, last, the last episode we had before we, we were out for a couple of weeks, me and Rome both just blink, blink, chunked, just them. chunked our way through. It was but pretty But to their awesome. credit, they were like, leave it in. That's what it leave is, it. dude. That's, that's it is. the riff. Yeah. Love it. And you know what else I love? Well, we What's all messed that? up on stage. Oh, <laughs> Yo, come please, on. A thousand times. Oh, um, but yeah, what else I love is when people tell us about when they pooped their pants. It's one of every, you, all of our listeners' favorites. I, and you know what? This is even, I, I don't think that anyone's told us this, and this is a pee your pants. We'll take I'm it. very, very excited about. I said, Micah, do you have like a funny story about like poop in your pants? He's like, not really. And he goes, I have one about peeing. And I was like, oh man, almost even better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you know, you got, there's a first time for everything. Right? And you know what you're doing? You're opening. This is the glass ceiling's been shattered, everybody. Mm-hmm. Now you've opened, you've paved it. So if anyone's got a pee your pants story now, they can be involved. So they can you're thank, starting off. They can thank me. <laughs> yes, they can. <laughs> no, well, I was thinking too, like I I pooped my pants once when I was a little kid. And, and it's not that funny of a story. I mean, I pooped in a lake and then I tried to pretend I didn't and I like wash it out and then I <laughs> moved on with kid. my day. Okay. You know? Sensible. Yeah. yeah. But it's You're a short a story. It's a very short story. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Um, well, when I was a kid, like you guys both, I played a lot of little league baseball over the years and that led to like tournament baseball, you know, those club teams, kind of like club soccer, but you tra travel baseball team, you go to out of state, you go to Vegas. So, um, we were at a tournament. I don't remember. I think it was in Santa Barbara maybe. And I'm like 11, maybe 10 years old. And, um, I'm like on deck, like starting off the next inning, you know, but I'm, it's like not even that inning yet. It's like the inning before. And I just like really have to pee and I'm on, I'm playing third base. So I can't just leave the field and go pee, you know, and the bathrooms from this field were like so far. Oh. And so I'm like already worried about it. We're playing like this a long inning. We finally get the third out. I'm like running in and I realize as I'm jogging, even just oh. to the dugout, I'm like, this is so hard to hold in, oh, you know? No. And you're up and, next. And so I'm on deck. So I'm like, oh, I'm no. taking my practice swings. I'm just like, you're doing that awkward dance where you're just trying Wait, to hold it in. How old did you say you were? Sorry. Like 10 or 11. Oh yeah. man. So this is, it's, like, so, it's, it's the perfect it's age to not want to piss yeah, your right, pants. Not age yeah. You want to be, that's the yeah. age right where you're starting to figure out like, okay, I, I don't want to yeah. embarrass myself. And I'd girls rather and be 16 and, and piss my pants oh, than yeah. 10. Yeah. 10 year olds are fucking brutal. Yeah. yeah. So I'm first guy. He's up to bat. I think he hits like a, a single or something. So I'm up. I'm like, fuck. I, I kind of want to just strike out so that I don't <laughs> have to run. So, oh, no. but I'm just, I get in the batter's box and I'm just like, holy shit, this is insane. It's, I'm, I'm about to piss myself. I'm so nervous. <laughs> and so he throws a pitch. I like hit a line drive up the middle and, or kind of like down the gap a little bit mm -hmm. because it gets past the fielder and I'm running first and I'm like, I have to, I'm going for a double and I just, I just let go and I'm just, uh, <laughs> I just start peeing and, uh, you're running. and I'm running the bases in a game. And it's like, <laughs> it's, it's like a tur travel tournament where like, there's a lot of families and fans and stuff there. Uh, so, no. so I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck do I do? So I dive head first uh, into the let dirt. Let the sand soak it up. So the sand just covers me and like, and I kind of brush it off, but I'm like not brushing off right here. Cause I don't want it to like rub in and get all wet, you know? <laughs> and I get a double, everyone's cheering and like, but I'm pretty much, I'm fully wet, like all the oh, way down the front. My socks God. are soaked. Oh, you know, your, your baseball socks, shit. you know how tight oh, baseball socks are on here. Oh, no. They go up to your knees. Yeah, and that's the age where oh. my pants were rolled up to your like above oh, your yeah. shins, you know? So my socks are soaked. There's dirt all over me. It's like red dirt. It was this baseball field. The dirt was so red in Santa Barbara. <laughs> and so I end up scoring and then like, but it's, I, I can't like change, you know, no. the, you, you there's don't nothing I can do. Uniforms. I play like two more innings like that. I'm just trying to, st I'm in the like end of the dugout, like trying not to like, <laughs> Turning your body. Yeah. Pee, oh, like a <laughs> we had like, and I was so, I was like, <laughs> God, I gotta get out of here. And the coach calls like a post game, like little meeting under the tree after the game. We, we sat there. I'm like sitting there, like, like just thinking to myself, someone's got to smell it by yeah, now. I get in the like, car. Did you guys, did anyone else think this dirt smells like pee? Yeah. I like, get in the car to leave and my mom and dad are like, it smells like Peter. I, I never told him. I don't know if anybody know, but like, I feel you like escaped I, I might have got away with it. I wrote a short story about it in college. So whoever the, my classmates that read that story know about it, but <laughs> traumatizing moment wow. yeah. or a harsh. Mo I'm glad nobody called you out on it. You got away. Let me ask you this. Were you what colors the uniform? This plays in if it's the gray oh, wow. style pants, I get it so white hard pants. That's the a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the gray, yeah, you would have been so dark. It's just yeah. hard so to dark. hide it there. Yeah. yeah. White pants and like dark blue socks or something like that. So, oh, you're lucky. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I just let the dirt kind of hang out for the rest of the game yep. and just like, but it was nothing like having like soaked socks tight oh. on your skin for like an hour. You're playing sports. It's the worst. Yeah. That's not good. I, it's, I'm it's sure a couple of my teammates had to know. Yeah. Oh, sure. Thankfully, like nobody ever called me out on it. Like there was yeah. no embarrassing moment where like I was a complete and total oh. shame. You know, I love this though. You're all, I wrote a paper about it in college <laughs> and now I'm here to share it with you guys today. I just, I don't, I just, that popped into my brain that I did that. Like, as I was saying, the same <laughs> oh. did you guys win the game? I think we did. Nice. Yeah. Because we had that little post game meeting and I remember it was like, everybody was pumped, but I was just like, oh, fuck, I gotta go. <laughs> you know, so we had, wow. so you hit a double and then the next guy had to hit a, a single or something to, to get, get you home, in. Yeah. So you had to sit in it out yeah. there. Probably the safest place you could be maybe I'm, out at second. Totally. Yeah. You I know, mean, for a bit. Yeah. I'd Oof. love to just, I picture as you're running in between first and second, you're almost there and there's <laughs> pee just like, 
flying out the size oh, of your cup. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> what? Was there a trail? No, because it a just slowly drops. So, I think I think it luckily the p baseball pants are pretty like thick absorbent. and absorbent. Yeah. So <laughs> it kind of soaked right into my pants and socks. Like, and, like hot day. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So oh, it was it, awesome. somehow I got away with it, but it was brutal. <laughs> that's good. Well, as Micah was telling us earlier that oh, he's like, I don't have a, you know, poop my pants story, but I do have a pee. And Jake says that he also yeah. has a pee. I have a story recent pee well. story. And so a lot of people who listen to the show, I, I think we've talked about it on on this podcast before, how I have like a pee jug in my van, you know? And it's like made to be peed in for like people that are on the road that got to pee. It's, you know, it's all ergonomic. It's got to handle the whole deal, right? The reason I have that in the van is because I, I was always the guy, at least recently, that I have to pee. My wife and I, if like, you know, we go to the mall, whatever. As soon as we get there, I'm like, I got to pee, dude. Let's go find a bathroom. I'm constantly having to pee. It's just because I drink all day, I guess. Coffee, water, whatever. But um, finally, one day I'm driving home and I'm... I have to pee. I, I realized this 15 minutes from my house. I'm like, I oh, know, big. I'll hold it. Right. But then it's taking longer for me to get home than I, than I anticipate. And it, it's starting to become evident to me that it's just not going to happen. I've undone the seatbelt. I've undone my pants, <laughs> any piece of pressure that can be undone. I've done. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like two to three blocks from like getting to my apartment complex, but then I got to drive through it. There's speed bumps. I have to park. I'm three flights up. I'm not going to make this. I start to realize in the middle of the road, I'm actually hovering my, sorry, I kicked the mic. I'm actually hovering my body off the seat at this point because it's just, I can't have any pressure. I'm float driving with no seatbelt. <laughs> <laughs> so I see like a fucking, oh dude, it's it's like a, um, a Trader Joe's parking lot in Newport beach that has an industrial feel to it. I pull in at a thousand miles an hour. I don't even have time to park properly. I pull in sideways, like in the back <laughs> of this Trader Joe's and there's like an industrial building next to it with workers outside. I know, right what you're talking I'm about. I'm like, Jesus. And there's a fence pull in sideways. I throw the side of my uh, car door open. I like throw it into park. The car's all uh, like does one of those shitty stops. <laughs> and as I'm getting out, I just piss all over my pants. And then I just get out and I kind of try to finish as much as I can outside my pants. And I did a shame drive home and you pissed your pants. this is like two years ago. I'm a <laughs> fucking full blown grown adult and I pissed myself driving home. And since then I've had the piss bucket in my car, never even a close to an accident since I simply pull over pee and life's grand. We'll have the link to the piss bucket uh, below, guys. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for doing this isn't for it, me. Isn't it weird how like when you're almost able to pee, like you let go of all ability to hold it. It's it like, instantly yeah. gets yep. twice as bad. Yeah, yeah. It's same with shit. We've had people on this on the show that are like, I'm I'm seeing where I need to be to shit. I'm 30 seconds of jogging away, and it's just your body says nope, and they poop yeah. themselves like right outside <laughs> yeah. the porta potty. We've had a couple people yeah. say that. Yeah, oh. when you have to go, as soon as your body thinks it's time, it's just time. No, yeah. it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Physics be damned. All right, all right. Uh, um. Are we getting into Q and A? We are getting into Q and A. All right, All it's right. everyone's worst, least favorite thing. All right, hit that. No, this comes from our Patreon members. We love them, of course, and they have a lot of questions for you. I believe awesome. we did a Mike, uh, Micah Brown, ask him some questions. So play the drop, Luke. Questions. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Ask us any question you want. Let's get into it. Oh, we didn't even talk about the, the, the cool picture. We had a funny picture of Micah Brown as a youngster playing we'll baseball. Put we'll put it up. Yeah, and we'll, we'll circle which one's yeah. him. Yeah. You can right. just imagine that pudgy little kid pissing himself. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We'll, we'll circle which one's him. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll point to where the pee was coming out of. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. As, as uh, Jake was saying before, these <laughs> questions come from our Patreon members. Uh, and if you want a chance to ask us some questions, uh, you get four bonus episodes every month and guitar tutorials uh, from Dirty Head Songs from from me you can go on over to patreon.com forward slash feeling good with daddy and you can sign up there it's five bucks a month and they get all that cool stuff and it really helps the show keep going so here we go this one comes first from jen peterson uh oh and she says do you really know what you're getting into micah <laughs> well, we he asked him that to actually be fair, i did i knew i, yeah, I listened okay. to the show so nice. and i love you guys so. <laughs> yeah how, and you could tell you yeah. fit right in oh yeah and creepy Kimmy, and she really is creepy. She wants to know what is your least favorite part of every day besides this question. <laughs> oh, Kimmy. 
Or, um, to, I mean, this, we're getting real honest here, but it's like every time I have to go back and take my second dump, it's like I've already taken a dump. I don't want to have to just do this all again, you know, yeah, like we with the wipes did this. and everything. Oh, like, man. Just, I sometimes sit and wait just to try to get two and one out, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> save the trouble of the whole Damn, deal. Damn, ended up being oh. a really good question, <laughs> yeah. Jimmy. Okay. You're right, though. The morning dump is such an awesome way to get the day going. And then the second one, you're like, come on, dude. Yeah. Are we really going gonna... to? We're going back here already? <laughs> yeah. What year is it? Oh. <laughs> Are we doing this still? <laughs> uh, this comes from Jesse, and it looks like she's trying to squeeze three questions into one. Sneaky. Which she knows is against the rules. But uh, Her name is literally Rules. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she does. Yeah, she does, yeah. Uh, is there anything you miss about life in Hawaii? Uh, well, I feel like she might think yeah. I grew up in Hawaii like everybody else in Hawaii, no. which I didn't. But I did live there. Yes. And I lived there. I moved there in 2000 three after I graduated high school. Uh, my brother lived there. He was in the Navy at the time. So um, I, what do I miss about that? I, I do miss like just the weather, like not always, but certain nights, like the magic of like the wet, like the nature out there, you yeah. know, like the moonlight and like the waves and shit. Like it sounds super cliche, but no, it's, it's Bellows Beach on Oahu. Um, that's, I've just, there's a night that sticks out in my mind of like, just like this atmosphere that I, like, I want to re recreate, you know, sometimes yeah. and I miss that and you can't anywhere else really. But mm -hmm. so, yeah, I lived there about a year. That's probably, I mean, just the vibe, I think. That's cool. Um, favorite. Oh yeah. Go ahead. No, I'm, getting, yeah. I'm jumping ahead. That's cool. <laughs> she also, she wants to know also what's your favorite song to play live. It changes. Obviously I'm sure you know. Yeah, I say um, that every time. But as far as I think this lot, we did these drive-in shows and um, I think off the new album coast in um, the song smile is pretty fun to play. It's kind of like, almost kind of like a petty vibe, like the way we, yeah. it's like not straight reggae. It's more of a rock kind of song. A little song. different style. So it's fun. Yeah. And so that's like right up my alley as far mm. as like my natural groove, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that one was really fun to play on those shows. Um, but I would say from the last tour, like probably energy, which is a song that we do a long kind of horn thing. And there's like, it's a very big crowd participation song. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's always fun when you can, kind of do a, a really long version of a song and include the crowd and kind of get the, you know, get the, like the climax of the show kind of vibe. Yep. So that's the song that we've usually build that around. So nice one. Um, Duddy's little carpet munchers. I uh, want to know, did you guys ever watch MXC, the most extreme elimination? Oh my that God. Shit was yes. Hilarious. I, I totally did. Yeah. Gee yeah. the douche here. Yeah. 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 Gee here. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That was Some of the funniest things ever. And then, yeah, like the jobs they'd give to all the people. For anyone that doesn't oh, yeah. know, right? It yeah. was like a Japanese, like, you know, like show Wipeout where people yeah. fall and get hurt. It was like a Japanese version of that, at that when Duddy and I were kids. I'm just for anyone listening that might not know. When Duddy and I were kids and Micah. I think it was, they, I don't know they if we dubbed were kids. It, we were maybe like in our 20s. We were like in our yeah. early, yeah. It was early probably 20s, 20 years maybe. ago. It yeah. was on TV and they would dub over this old Japanese 80s yeah. game with English words and just make it, it was hilarious. hilarious. Yeah. It's, it's, yes, it's, it's the, the recipe for success because those Japanese game shows are insane. They're oh crazy. my God. And then, yeah, if you get they some would couple put themselves comedians, in danger. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see here. Jake Lapointe says, Micah, do you see yourself playing acoustic tours later in life uh, when touring life with the band slows down? Love your solo stuff. Definitely. I think, you know, I think as long as I can do that and it may not be as heavy, I think it'll be more, I think as you get older, it's kind of like less is more, you know, at some point. Yeah. And so, but I definitely, I would love to continue the acoustic music for as long as, you know, I enjoy it. And as long as it's going well, and as long as people want to hear the songs, like if there's a crowd and a need for it, then I'm yep. definitely down, you know, totally. And it's fun. And it's, it's different too. Like if you, if you're in a band, I used to be the opposite when I first started out as an acoustic artist. Like I was like, I miss the camaraderie of a band, you know, now I've been in a band for eight years now with Iration, which is crazy, but it's like, Ooh, I miss like just playing solo acoustic where it's like, I can just be myself and improvise and like not follow along with any structure. You know, that's the fun mm -hmm. part of acoustic is like, you can kind of just improvise a little bit more and go with the flow. Totally. Yeah. <clears throat> That's funny. Brad uh, Penry asks, and Brad's actually who was just here a second ago. Uh, Brad <laughs> says, will you be playing any Roman Duddy shows when they come back? And does Duddy and Dean owe us around at Newport still? <laughs> yep. oh, oh, this is some inside. He's asking <laughs> oh, personal yeah. questions of Duddy. They're talking about golf. 
Yeah. So that our our old Friday morning foursome, That's you, right. Dean, Brad, and myself. I I think the last time we played, I guess Brad and I got you guys. I think you got us, so we yeah. owe you the next round. Um, and then as far as the Roman Duddy tour, I mean, if and when it ever happens, I hope I hope I get to team back up with you. Oh, guys. Oh, for sure. We've got to do that run again. I mean, we never got to finish it. Yeah. So absolutely, 100%. definitely. I'm in. Yeah. Uh, Harvey Hi. Humbucker, which is just the best name, which we love, uh, says, Daddy, Micah, what's your biggest holy shit I made it moment? Um, you know, I don't know if it's the biggest, but, you know, the first one, I, I think we talked about it a little earlier, and that was, you know, I think that, like, weenie roast on that spin turnaround stage being on the same you know flyer with all those with all those bands and playing at that venue because that's my local venue i grew up seeing all the biggest shows i've ever seen so being on that stage for like the k-rock weenie roast with all those other bands that was like a holy shit this is crazy definitely yeah that same here i mean anytime you're playing those kind of big size crowds for the yeah. first time it's like you never forget that feeling yeah or like you know when you headline a big venue like yeah obviously like red rocks or you know the greek theater in berkeley or something yeah. like that where it's like yeah you're the headlining act and it's like a sold out show like yeah. that's that's a big, big that sold too. out red rocks feeling is pretty that's wild like when you walk out on that stage and you look up and you're just like god damn yeah. <laughs> how that did we get here insanity yeah it's pretty crazy um uh, <laughs> this is a funny question. This is a funny <laughs> this question. This is great. Chris, Kristen Moore says, uh, question for Jake. Are the Dirty Heads the luckiest band ever because of TikTok? <laughs> yeah, we are. Great question of the day. And no, the luckiest band ever is Queen. Obviously, they had Wayne's World. A whole new generation of kids are doing, you know, the Queen thing. And then now Bohemian Rap. <laughs> Yeah, the luckiest band ever remains forever queen. I don't agree with him. People on this just one. try to get me off it. it. No, it's not the dirty. The dirty heads earned everything they have like long before this. Way day. more than yeah. queen. Yeah, yeah no, mean. please, queen. They got lucky with the Wayne's World thing, and then the Bohemian Rhapsody the whole movie. World thing. Yeah, just very lucky I for mean, them. Jake, we did have Surfs Up. I mean, <laughs> you did. Yeah, but. You know, those other movies were much bigger, I think, that mm, that's why mm. they're still, you guys are up there okay. because of the TikTok thing, but no, it's no, just. No, honestly, I will say, yeah, we're super lucky because of that TikTok. That, uh, but the luckiest. No, not the luckiest. Yeah, but yeah man, because uh, as, uh, as you probably all know, or if you didn't know, I'll fill you in, I had zero to do with that and I've put in zero effort behind that TikTok thing. So yeah, mm -hmm. I'll say it's lucky and I'm stoked about it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Awesome, awesome, I way. mean, the guys in Queen had literally nothing to do with Wayne's World either. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so no, but good question. <laughs> Last and final question. Connor Mama, Monahan. Wait, you didn't answer my question. There's no time. Um, says, hey, Mr. Whiskers, what inspired you to venture out into the cannabis industry? And nice. that's for uh, Micah. He has a vape pen uh, company called Mr. Whiskers. Yeah. So a, a buddy of mine um, came to me a few years back and was just like, hey, I want to do something with you. It'd be fun. And he had a delivery service um, and kind of like a dispensary business. And so he and he was thinking like there was a need for other brands that, that he could carry. And so originally we were going to do like pre-rolls um, and we kind of pivoted the carts first, but Mr. Whiskers idea came because obviously with the beard, but I, I go down to Las Gaviotas a lot in Mexico, mm -hmm. just south of Rosarito and mm -hmm. Puerto Nuevo is like the little village where you can get the lobster and there's always these merchants out there, you know, yep. slang and stuff. And this one dude, like multiple times on different occasions, has like yelled out to me as I'm walking by, hey, Mr. Whiskers. Like, <laughs> and so that Perfect. always stuck with me. And so when we were trying to think of like a name <laughs> or like a that. vibe or a brand kind of idea, like what's the, what's the draw going to be for this? Because there's like a thousand and totally a thousand million cart mm -hmm. brands out yeah. there, right? <laughs> but uh, so Mr. Whiskers, you know, and yeah. so it's been a fun little side project and we're, we're trying to still lock up like a, a good, um, you know, licensed distribution deal and, so we're kind of just dabbling in it right now and hoping to get it up and Sweet. like fully fledged soon, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. That's awesome. But yeah. I do That's love that name, insane. Mr. Whiskers. That's yeah. awesome. That's perfect. And, and you, know you what do else look I like love? that. 
He yeah. just, I love how he just narrowed you down to that in one second. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Whiskers. Yeah. Mr. Whiskers. You're like, yes, yeah. fuck it. I'll take it. That's yeah. great. Oh, uh, is that it done? That's it. Jeez. That's it. So, I mean, yeah, before we get out of here, thanks for coming. I mean, is there anywhere that people can find you? Anything you want to like? Anything you want to promote. Promote if or anything. Yeah, anything. So, yeah, I guess we, uh, obviously, Iration, you know, we just Put out Coast in last July, but since then, since we haven't toured, we launched a Patreon as well, mm -hmm. um, which is a fun way to engage with like our kind of like the VIPs at the shows. You know, totally. like we you can't have that VIP experience on the tour. You can have it with us through Patreon, and so we do a lot of exclusive things that you guys know you're pitching yours. And so we do the Patreon. We're on we're up on the Discord server, like chatting with fans and stuff every every few days. We're all checking in. We're doing voice chats on discord with fans so check out our patreon uh, we also do, did a podcast kind of around the album we did kind of like that song exploder style thing where we we explored every song on the new mm -hmm. album and then we we pivoted with the podcast to more of like an interview style so nice. we'll have friends on so we'll have to get you guys i'll do an episode of the uplifter with you guys next time yeah and we'll just totally. like throw it back at you 100%. so hell yeah but uh and then we're gonna we have a remix um EP coming out for with some of the songs off Coast in which I don't even think that's announced yet. So that's oh, some, nice. an exclusive drop. <laughs> Exciting. I, yeah, I think it comes out sometime. Maybe the first single from that comes out in March. So yeah, keep your eyes out for the remix uh, release of Coast in. It's like all dub versions of some of the songs. So that's kind of fun. Um, and then yeah, hopefully, I mean, Lord willing, we'll get back on the road here and get some some shows going soon. But. There's a lot to check out online until then. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's been fun to just stay busy and kind of expand and pivot and grow. You yep, know, everyone's totally. got to do it. So. Nobody stopped. Everyone just found a new way. Yeah. You got to. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Well, shit. Thank you guys so much. It was so a great much. show, dude. Thank you so yeah, much. Thanks like for a, having me. Yeah, man. Thanks fun. for coming we, in. And good to hang with you guys. We jogged a lot of memories. Yeah. yeah. We haven't talked about or thought about in a long time. That was yeah. fun. That was rad. Right on, Hell man. yeah. Love you guys. See you next week. Peace. Peace.